good to have my uh, friend take over for me. Obviously, you can see he kind of preaches like I do. <laughs> Everything to the point type thing. He's a military guy. People don't know something about him. Uh, uh, Corey, Corey Chartier is a great soldier. Uh, Corey Chartier, uh, Corey Chartier, um, he's a man with two bronze stars and two purple hearts. Corey Chartier was blown up five times. Never wanted to have medals or anything for him. Never, barely could figure out. Sometimes he was he would he was unbalanced at times, and still stayed over there, and still went forward. Amen. He's a patriot. Yes. And he's a warrior. Yes. I remember when he was first going into the uh, ministry, and uh, a lot of people said, "Well, he 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 this and he that." And I, all I could think of was, he'll make it. He was used, he was coming up here and he was preaching here. And, uh, and then later on, um, he got upended by the church he was in. After they ordained him, uh, they upended him and they stopped supporting him. They said that he wouldn't make it. He'd be home with his tail between his legs within a year. I, asked, I said to Corey, I said, go. Oh. Amen. Amen. Go. You know why? After 20-something years of service, he ain't coming home. He ain't coming home with his tail between his legs. If he's coming home before a year, he was coming home in a body bag. I know soldiers. I know real soldiers. I know soldiers. Amen. He's been over there now three years. Amen. That's one of the reasons we got behind him. Yep. Mm -hmm. He's going to be there until, I, I know when Corey, if Corey can't make it, he's not going to make it all together. He's going to get something out there. He's gotten into Kashmir, he's gotten into Muslim areas, and he's preached the gospel. How many would do that one? Amen? Amen, I love him. I, I'm going to edit that part out of the... Uh, uh, out, of, out of the sermon. Because <laughs> he watches our videos. <laughs> Amen. So uh, let's go to Joel uh, chapter 1. Um, Joel chapter 1. Joel. Joel chapter 1. We may be in Joel. I want you to understand. I'm going to do this off the cuff. I had planned to do 1 Corinthians chapter 3. When I got up this morning, I couldn't, I couldn't stop marching around the house. Amen. Joel chapter 1, let's stand for the Word of God, this powerful uh, book we have in our hands. Joel chapter 1, and the Bible says, The word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Pethuel. Hear this, ye old man, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Tell your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. That which the palmer worm hath left, hath the locust eaten. And that which the locust hath left, hath the canker worm eaten, and that which the canker worm hath left, hath the caterpillar eaten. Awake, ye drunkards, and weep, and howl, all ye drinkers of wine, because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth, for a nation has come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and half the cheek teeth of a great lion. He hath laid my vine waste, and, and barked my fig tree. He hath made it clean bare, and cast it away. 
the branches thereof are made white. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord God, for the preaching today, Lord Father. Thank you, Lord God, for this holiday that we have, Lord Father. Thank you for a great country that has that you've, you've actually excelled it. You put it up, Lord, and, and here we are today. Thank you, Lord, that we live here. Thank you, Lord, that you provided for us here. Thank you, Lord, for making this a great nation to carry the gospel forth. We love you, Lord, and, and we, we here at Bible Baptist Church want to serve you. Thank you for being good to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's have a seat and go over the scripture. And I'm going to tell you, I took my jacket off today because uh, it's going to get it's going to get hot in here. Amen? It's going to get hot in here today. Uh, I'm going to preach this message. It's called America. It's something that we should hold true to ourselves. I get choked up. I don't know about you. I get choked up when I think of those things. I, I got to tell you something. I get angry when I think of those things, too. And what I see out there today, I'm angry. But the Bible says, hey, be angry and do what? And sin not. So it's okay to be angry with it as long as you don't go out and sin about it. We need to be peaceful about it. But we need to understand what's going on out there too. Amen? Now in Scripture, the way that lays that uh, this part of Scripture out, he says, the word of the Lord that came unto Joel, the son of Pethuel. The word of the Lord. Joel's a, a prophet and, and he gets a, a vision, but you have to understand something. It's a vision of words. Okay? You, when you read your Bible, sometimes you get a vision, and that vision is a vision of words. You read and you'll see it as it comes up. Your vision is of words and your mind goes forth. Amen? That's a, a, you'll notice something about writing prophets in the Bible. They don't do miracles. Writing prophets in the Bible. You don't see Joel uh, having any miracles. Uh, you, look, you saw Elisha. Uh, where's that book at? How about Elijah? Where's his book at? You see, they did miracles. Uh, even uh, uh, there is one, and although it's his old book, he never wrote one by his hand, and that's Jesus. You know, one of the greatest things that Jesus could do, he said, he turned around, he said, you'll do greater things than these. And people think they're doing magic tricks. But the greatest thing that Jesus left man to do is to convert other men because that's the greatest miracle is the new birth. And then the second greatest is that we, he left us to write the Bible. Man, a broken vessel is going to go out and preach a perfect message. You know, weekly I get up here and I preach a message. And people might say, he's a good preacher. I like this guy. I can teach. i got to tell you something. I'm a broken vessel preaching a message that I cannot do in full. Amen? You know, most of the messages that we're preaching in here are prophecy. You know why? Someday we're going to be able to do them. Yeah, amen. Someday you'll be able to obey the Ten Commandments. When, when God gives you a new body. When God gives you a new mind, when God gives you a new thoughts, you'll be able to do it. Thou shalt not. Have you done it? No. It's a prophecy. What's that? You'll do it in the future someday. Amen? Amen. When's that? At the rapture. When you lose that sin nature, all you people in here are going to fulfill the prophecy of the Ten Commandments. What's that? You're going to actually be able to, at one time, do all those commandments and not do the ones that you shouldn't do. Amen? Amen. How you doing on him right now? Not too good. But he says he's had a vision. Now he says, hear ye what, old man? Well, I have a very good day today. I actually am speaking to only those guys. <laughs> and I, hold on a second. And that guy too. I'm speaking to him. Oh yeah, hey look, there's gray hairs here. Okay? I'm an old man now. <laughs> Amen. He says, uh, he says, hear this. You notice how he doesn't say listen up? Hey, Brother Mark, you notice in the Bible it never says just listen? You know why? Because you'll just do that. 
He says, here, why? Now you've got to do something with it. Here with, the, uh, with that ear in there. Here with that ear. Uh, here. And if you put a cross at the end of it, what do you got? You got the heart. And if you move the H to the end of that heart, you got the earth. You don't think God knows what he did with words? He knows exactly what he did with words. He says, hear ye, O men. What's that? He says, you give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Guess what? That means you. You say, well, he's talking about Israel. Okay, we're doing it here today. You need to listen up. Okay, we all need to listen up. This is affecting everybody that's in this room. It says, hath this been in your days? Have we seen this in beforehand? When we were young, we didn't see these things that we're seeing today. When we were young, men went to war. When we were young, we were, there was communities out here. There were people that met, the neighbors met. The neighbors got together. They had cookouts. When your neighbor wasn't problem, we went over to their houses and we gathered together. Do you see that today? We are divided today. It's no longer, look, there was years ago when the community wanted to be part of the church. Now the church is trying to be part of the community and you know what's happening? They're letting down their principles. Because the community is all out of whack. And it's gotten disgusting. The local drug addict is no longer down there somewhere where we don't know. He's on our block. He says, hear this, you old man. Hear this. It wasn't like that in our day, he says. You didn't see this stuff in your days. He said, even the days of your fathers. You remember those days when you went out and you even took a penny candy and you came back and you got caught and daddy took his bell off. You mean your daddy beat you over a penny? You better believe it. Amen. It wasn't about the cost. It was about what you did. That's right. That's right. You know what? Today they admire sin. They mock at the truth and they admire sin. Yes, they do. They just had a guy. He was he, he held guns to a girl's belly. And then all of a sudden, he's all hyped up on drugs. And some guy puts his knee in his back. And now that cop, who has been doing his job for 20 or 30 years, is sitting in a prison cell for a scumbag. And not only the not only the evil people, the liberals are the ones backing them. You know what you got? You got the you got the Republicans backing them. They're backing criminals today because they're afraid of those that are just yelling and opening up their mouths. There is no such thing as right judgment today. Ye old man, listen up. Did this happen in your father's days? Verse number three, he says, tell your children of it. Are you telling your kids of it? Well, they don't listen. Tell them again. Tell your children of it. And let, allow your children to tell them, there's the problem. They don't let you even talk to your grandkids today. They should be allowing your wisdom to go to their kids. I'll raise my kid the way I want. And then they got a criminal as a kid. With the ancient, there is wisdom. We don't have these scars for no reasons. You know why these scars are here? Trial and error. So that we can go and tell others what stupid things we did. Amen, Miss Adrian? You tell your kids. Look, how many of you have said this? Son, listen to me so you don't go through the things that I went through so that you won't make those mistakes 
that I made. And what do your kids say? Well, I'll just have to do it myself. And we always say, what? Well, you'll just go through it. But you have to understand something. It's, it's to the point now where the things that they're judging on, they're judging evil beside evil and trying to make good out of evil. They call evil good today. They call a guy, oh, he's off the on drugs, he died. Of, he, let me tell you something, people. That George Floyd, he died of an overdose. And I'll give you another one. You know why he died? He resisted arrest. That's why he died. When anybody brings it up to you, that's the first thing I always say. Why was he resisting arrest? If you resist arrest and you die, it's your fault. Don't blame the cop. He's doing his job. If you weren't doing anything wrong, the cop wouldn't be in your face. When they come in your face when you haven't done anything wrong, don't worry about it. God will take care of it. You know what that Bible says? It says, you do what's right. You, you listen to the powers. It doesn't say listen to the governor, just so you know. Christians have messed up. The powers that be, I, I, I'll give you the powers. This is how it goes. The Constitution is the power in which we derive that from. Our laws are derived from the Constitution. Amen? Okay, now, the, the, Constitution, the Constitution says things like this that these laws shall not be infringed upon. The Constitution says that ye have the right, and they will make no law to infringe the right of speech, right? Well, here's the problem. They never mention, everybody thinks, well, the government gives me the right to free speech. No, they didn't. They're not allowed to make a law that infringes upon your right. Where did that right come from? We have to go to another document, people. I've heard people say, well, God isn't in. God is not in the Constitution. They didn't have to. It was in the, the, it was in the declaring uh, document. The document says that we have these inalienable what? Who gave us the rights? They were endowed by our... Who gave us the rights? God gave us the right. But the problem isn't that God just gives us the right. You know what the right of free speech is? It's not the right to just say what you want. It's the right to say truth. You have the liberty to say truth. And when you don't tell the truth, you, you should be punished. Yeah. Man, we all be in heck, huh? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> That's the rights. Hey, look, you have the right to bear arms. Even Jesus turned around and said, you got sword with you? They said, we got two. That's good enough. And if you don't have a sword, what did he say? Sell your clothes. Well, oh, 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 preacher, he's talking spiritual. He still mentioned them. Yeah. They still had swords. Let me tell you something. Uh, you married men, I'm sorry, but if somebody comes in your house, you better meet the guy. And if you ain't physically able, you better. You might want to take something out. Nowadays, you better get a plan together. My wife and I have a plan. I grab one weapon and I run. And I'm fi I, I fight. You know what my wife's doing? She's loading. She's bringing more rounds. Why? We might have more to do. I thought I was supposed to duck underneath that. That's what I said. <laughs> Get the rounds. <laughs> duck underneath. Get the rounds. Amen? Now watch something here he, he talks about. He tells your, tell it to another. Tell it to the next generation. Uh, you need a generation of legacy. That's what you need, a generation of legacy. You know what you need? That generation of legacy of a relationship with God. You Look, America's not there without the Lord. I want you to understand that. And the reason we, look, they turned to God, they turned us against God. They kicked him out of everything. You know, uh, I was watching like a couple months ago, and one of the uh, congressmen got up, and he was saying, he was talking about uh, one nation under God, and he was bringing it up and talking about we need to repent as a nation uh, under God. And then uh, Humpty Dumpty Nadler got up. <laughs> and he turned around and he says, well, and he gets up there, and all he wanted to do was dismiss, dismiss the board. Christians should have been down on their knees begging God to maybe break his leg. Maybe Humpty Dumpty needs to fall off the wall, people. 
Amen. You know what's something you, you, that God tells you, he says, pray for you, love your enemies and pray. I love, I love these people. I'd like to see them get saved. But i got to tell you something. Most of them, I ain't got a chance to do it, and they're reprobates, and I say this. I'm, I am praying for them. You know what I'm praying for right now? I've been praying for them to stay alive and go into the tribulation and get eaten up by the locust. <laughs> yeah, amen. Give them good health. Give Como. I want them to have good health. I'm praying good for them. Why? So we can go into tribulation and get stung by those locusts. He can't even kill himself five months or whatever it is. I think it's a good thing for him. You know, what he's done to other people, tortured them, putting people on ventilators that didn't need them, yeah. comatose people, that's torture, people. Yeah. Sending, sending it, uh, people that are sick into nursing homes to up his numbers. People, he's a murderer. That man's a murderer. Just odd. Who the? If well, we were down in we were down in Florida, it was like a different universe. People just moving around, walking around. They actually cared about each other. Yeah. Their numbers don't even match ours, and they have the same amount of people in their state that we have that we have in New York. What's the difference? Oh, we're together. We're close. I was down there. They were close together too. Yeah. And their numbers are still beating ours by by incredible amounts. You know what the difference is? They care about each other a little more, and they have a governor who actually takes charge. And he actually likes the people. You, you got, we got people, they just don't like us. Amen. If they, let me tell you something. If this governor in this state liked us, he wouldn't be governor no more. I got to tell you, why is that? Because if he had let us vote for real, we'd vote him out. Amen. Amen. Hey, people, I want you to understand something. The election was stolen, like it or not. And stop letting them people tell you to watch it. Right. That's right. We're all backing off, even our politicians. Every one of them should be standing up every single time and saying, hey, this was stolen. We're in the majority. It's about time, people. I told you I was going to get hot. <laughs> Let's look at verse number four. Now, look, I understand this is about Israel. But you've got to understand something. This is also our nation. Now, look at verse number four. He says, That which the palmer worm hath left hath the locust eaten. And that which the locust hath eaten hath the canker worm left hath the canker worm eaten. And and that which the canker worm hath left hath the caterpillar eaten. You know what's happening right now? We're eroding from the inside. That which uh, is there, okay? Uh, all the good stuff is getting taken away. Uh, hey, look, that which is there. Look, the first thing they took away was the Bible. They took the Bible. They start changing everything in your book. They start taking that book and they start... They start selling other books and saying, this is a better Bible. Oh, you don't need that. You need to have a book about the Bible. And did you realize the, the craziness of that? You need something else. Look, you know, you get saved. The first thing that happens is you got even other Christians or babies that come up to you and start talking about things you don't even need to know. Hey, look, did you ever speak in tongues? You just, I just got saved. I can barely speak English. Next thing you know, they're saying, well, you ain't got the real spirit in you because you don't speak in tongues. i got to tell you something. That hurts. And you know what it does? You lose confidence. That's what it does. I mean, if you're truthful, you know you're not doing any of that stuff. And you're worried about it. Why ain't I speaking in tongues? Why ain't I doing it? So you know what? You've got one or two choices. You can lie or you go somewhere else. Amen? How many went somewhere else? Feel good about that? Amen. Why? Because now you understand. <laughs> I want to know what the preacher's saying. Amen. He says, what, what was good? And, and, and i got to tell you, you know what that passage is really telling you? There's nothing good left. They took it all away. They took your Bible away. You know what they went after there? After that, they went after the songbooks. They brought new songs in. They changed the songs. Take the blood out of the songs. Uh, grace, grace, God's grace. Where the blood of the Lamb was spilt? No, that blood was shed. Spilling the blood is, a, is an accident. 
where the blood of the lamb was shed. They change a word. And it makes a difference, people. How about this song? How about this song? Uh, it is well with my soul. He says in that, that he says, uh, it says in that book, whatever, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to. Now, the, you know what they change it to? Say. No, we don't say anything. We know. In the original letter, it says, thou hast taught me to know it is well with my soul. Why'd they change it? So everybody can look at that and you can lose your salvation now. I have nothing to say. Hey, look, I told you a thousand times, if, I could, if we could lose our salvation, all of us would be dead by now. We'd be all chain smokers. I'd be four packs, three to four packs a day. I'd be that worried. Why? Because I know me. He says, uh, what's the next thing? Well, uh, let's take away... Let's take away the, the song service. Let's take away, guess what? In the end, you know what will be left? The, the preachers. We'll take them away. That will be the last one. The, the, first off, you're going to have preachers preaching the wrong thing from the wrong book. They're going to be preaching the wrong message. And then, you take the good preacher out, and guess what? You just bring out somebody else. Now no longer is the seed the Word of God. It's the offering container that's sitting up there. And if you sow that seed, God going to bless you with uh, more money. Guess what? The only one getting rich is the guy up there that's getting the money. I was bringing that up in Sunday school. You want to get rich? They all get on the infomercials and tell you, get rich, do this, and buy my product. You want to get rich? Get your own infomercial and sell something. Sell your corny ideas, too. You get rich. Hey, look, you want to get rich? In, in, in religion, be Joel Osteen. Tell people what they want to hear. You're going to get money. Now, you know, you're so good and everything's good and you're every and God likes you because you're good and good and good and that's good. And then at the end, you know what he does? He tells you you need Jesus. What do I need him for? I've been I'm good. That's why he tells you that. He wants you to come back. He wants your cash. That's why he tells you those great things. Be, hey, how about this one? Only hang around with positive people. Be positive. Everything should be positive. Is that a, is that a good balance? Hey, look, the, every one of you got saved because of your sin. Because you realize the state of you is what? You're a sinner and you're no good. Well, that doesn't fit his message. Well, guess what? Get out of there. Go somewhere else. You need a better message. Amen? And you know what the, the part is on this? That which the Palmer were. Everything that's gone. And you know what? God still took Israel back. You know, we, I got people and they're, they're preachers today. They're Bible-believing preachers. And I went to a meeting. And you know what they said? We're not worried about the country. We were so worried about the church and the church and the church and the church. And then, you know what they told people? Don't be a patriot. Because the word pat means paternal, which means father. Don't call no man your father. <clears throat> I got so mad at that, I had to get up and walk out. Here's the thing. This country supports, we, yet you realize that the Word of God was brought from Great Britain. It was brought over here. These people were searching for God. There wasn't money here. There wasn't like some open bank system. There was nothing. There was nothing here. Our forefathers came here off of a boat and they, they, they started making things happen. They were looking for God. They wanted a place to worship where they could worship the God, the God of the Bible. You see, they were playing with your faith. Yes, your great heritage of faith is what they were playing with. Here, is this piece of bread God? No, it's not God. Well, we want to make sure we go to a place where we can worship God freely by faith. Not by the Church of England that tells us what to do. That's what the separation of church and state is, people. It's so that one church couldn't come in, the Church of America, and say, you're all underneath us, and guess what? We'd all be standing around going tic-tac-toe, three in a row, and going to hell. Amen? They came here looking for the Lord. Do you understand how they went thousands of miles we got people can't even go around the block today. They went thousands of miles to find a place where they could worship God 
out and build a community. That's our forefathers, people. Amen. But my family didn't come here until 1920. No, your family's here now. That becomes your history. No different. It's our history, people. This is a great land. We've had people get up since 1775, even before that, that stood up against tyranny and injustices. And we, we formed a nation here. Here's how God looked at Israel when he says, Awake ye drunkards, and do what? And weep, and how? He says, All ye drinkers of wine, why is that? Because the new wine. The new wine. For it is cut off from your mouth. He's talking about your joy's gone. That's the joy. Wine is the joy. I may mean, look, I'm not talking about fermented liquor. Get your head out of that. That's old wine. He says you're, you, you've got to get the new wine. What's that? Your old wine is making you corrupt. Hey, I don't know about you, but I've got to tell you something. And I'm going to give it to you. This is a harsh reality. Have you noticed it takes 11 DWIs for a guy to go to jail? Haven't anybody noticed that a guy can get seven DWIs and not drive it again? You know why that is? Because your judges are a bunch of drunks. And they're numbing down judgment. That'll really get you when you start to think of the pedophilia. I know a guy did it three times. He got ten years probation with penetration in a church. He got... 10 years probation. How about what would happen in the uh, what would happen if Jesus was in charge? What's the problem? Our leaders. Our leaders. They're paying everybody off, talking to this one, nepotism, everything down the line. Amen? He says, awake. Get up, wake up. See what's around you. Look, well, I'm, a, I'm an old man. I understand, but you still got a mouth. But they won't listen. Who cares? God never told you to worry about them listening. Even about the preachers and the gospel and stuff like that. They, we're told to preach the gospel. We're not told to comply with them. He never even told us to ask them if they want to hear it. Go to Ezekiel chapter 2. It's back. From where you are, it's back. It's Isaiah, it's Jeremiah, it's Ezekiel. I understand Lamentations too, but it's so small if you sneeze, you're past it. <clears throat> Ezekiel chapter 2, Ezekiel 2. Verse number one, and he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me, and set me upon my feet, that I heard him that spake unto me. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this day, very day. They are... For they are an impudent children and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them. And thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. And they, well, here it is, And they, whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. You know what God just said? Who cares if they want to hear who cares what their decisions is? He says, tell them anyway. You know what people will tell you? Uh, they'll say to you, uh, you shouldn't talk about it to people. So they should have their choice. They don't have any choice if you don't tell them. Because there's another preacher that's out there, and he's speaking 24-7, and all they have to do is change the channel to hear him. The world has their preachers. It's called the, the news. 
And if you're listening to news, I bring it up. If you don't listen to any news, you're, you're uninformed. If you listen to the news, you're misinformed. Amen? Amen. There's one thing you won't notice. We're in a war. We're in a war in this country right now. And people don't even understand it. It's a war in the mind, but it's mostly in the mind of our children. They've taken over the school boards. They're telling what to be taught in our schools. And they're teaching kids that everything's, everything's about race. Yeah, it is about race in some way. What's that? The human race. There's only one race in the Bible. What's the human race? We all are in there. We all have one blood that came from Adam and Eve and was brought down unto us. Look, I don't care. Look, I don't want to hear about slavery. The first people that I know that were recorded that enslaved people were Africans that enslaved the Jews. It's been going on for centuries. Knock it off. It's over with. Everybody born in this country, yes, maybe you won't be president. I don't believe everybody has a chance to be president. I can tell you that right now. I have no chance whatsoever. Some people are just smarter than others. But that doesn't mean you can't live a great life. It's not about how much money you got anyway. It's about your principles. Which is what we have lost is our principles. Make your decisions on principles, not on feelings. Your feelings will deceive you. One day you're, you're, you're lovable and the next day you're angry. The weather might be hot and you're aggravated. But if you set it on principles and what is right, that's what America's about. But I'm going to give you something else. We're in a church right here. And this church is in Governor. And Governor is in St. Lawrence County. And St. Lawrence County is in New York, and New York is in the United States. You know what this church does? This church supports seven missionaries. We support, that's you. Your money is going towards missionaries. You know what they're doing? They're taking the gospel around the planet. You're so self-centered, or even our preachers have come to the point where they're so self-centered that all they think about is, oh, God's building a church. I understand, but the church is our church that we're building here, and, 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 and you're here. It's in America. And we support missionaries overseas, yes. Maybe our fields aren't ultra-white. But theirs are. We don't yeah, We saw four people in one month. That isn't much. But let me tell you something. Nigeria is seeing 1,800 a month. Amen. One missionary. Amen. That's where our money's going. Dude, we're the only country that's doing this. We're the only ones that are sending missionaries. That's what's an attack. If our church ain't here, no missionary gets that money. They come off the field. Guess what? You want to stand before God and ask, and he asks you why that missionary come off the field? We took the gospel around the globe out of America. No other country did it. People just looking at the word Jerusalem. Do you ever see the word? We spell it J E R. Okay, guess what? J-E-R, and what's right next to it? U-S-A. L-E-M. It's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence that God put us right in the middle of Jerusalem. We are their protector, and when we don't protect Jerusalem, and we don't protect Israel, no one will. And guess what? If we're not going to protect her, God does not need us anymore. And these eroding people are taking away. They're voting against Jerusalem. They're voting against Israel right now. 85% of all the legislation that's at the UN, guess what, is against Israel. You know what God says? Oh, wake up and wake up and see what's happening. But they're fixing the elections. Not if we stand up. 
and not allow it. You say, but it's going to happen. Yes, I want to tell you something. We're going to lose. We're in a losing battle. The Antichrist is taking over. Amen? Yeah, right. We're in a losing battle. But that don't mean you lay down. Amen? Amen. The spirit that you have inside of you has been doing that for years. Maybe it's not our grandkids and maybe it's not our kids that, are, that have that in them. Hey, look, people. Today's the 4th of July. It's cookout day, right? Look around you. Where are they at? Where are they at? It makes you think. What's more important? A barbecue down at the block or God's word? Yeah. You know, you, you've got a good message today. An exhorting message of what? Get up. Keep going. You need to be exhorted. You need to be, you need to be encouraged. I'm not telling you you're a bunch of losers. I'm telling you every single one of you has some fight in you. I'm not telling you to go out and beat people up. But that fight that's here and you have this and don't let somebody control your mind and control your speech. Don't allow it. Well, I went to work and they said I can't. I, they went to, I went to work and they said I had to have this and do this and I have to have these opinions. Okay, when you're at work, just keep your mouth closed. It helps you anyway. But not in your house. I ain't telling you to go on Facebook and shout and yell and everything like that. You only have to change one person. I'm telling you, we're in the majority. They, that's why they had to fix election. I liked how Bill Brady said it. You steal a man's wife, you'll steal an election. Amen? Mm -hmm. This is America. We pledge allegiance to the flag. We don't let somebody go out there and burn it. Right. And we don't applaud him when he burns it. This is America where we think with common sense through the word of God. A man that wears a dress is not an expert at mental behavior. Amen? Amen. There's something wrong with principles when we start looking towards a man that's in a dress acting like a girl. He's not the man you want. We're not to listen to people like that. Amen? Amen. You have to understand, so, well, he's in charge and he says he has to bear. It's not what he's saying. You know what God's talking about is, is like this. I go out and I street preach. And when I street preach, cops come up and they say to me, you need to stop. And I say, no. I have a right to do this. And I, I use my freedom of speech to do it. And they have come to stop us and to shut us down. And we do not stop. We have the power by a constitution. And he will leave. Now, if he turns around and lays his hand on me, I submit. That's what he's talking about. When they lay their hands on you, he says, don't resist arrest. Why? I don't need to be a martyr. Right. I need to live and preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. Amen? That's the difference. But I can tell you this. If it comes to the point where it's pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed, sooner or later, I'm going to fight back. Amen? Mm -hmm. That's what started it all. Remember when they came to take their guns in 1775? What'd they do? They shot him. I'm waiting for the first shot for some reason. I don't know if I'm going to be involved, but I'm telling you this. Sooner or later, they're going to come up to one of the rednecks in New York. <laughs> they are! <laughs> Most likely, yes. He says, verse number six, and we'll end here. He says, for a, a nation has come up upon my land. And they're strong. They got the power. You know what the power that lies with the liberal is he's a complainer and he won't stop talking. That's the problem. Their mouths need to be shut. You need to give them, you know they won't debate with you because you have truth and they never do. 
He says, a, a, a nation has come up against you, and it's without numbers. We don't know whose teeth are the teeth of lions, and yes, they are. How many of you have given your, have, have listened to these opinions, went against it, and your own family members charge after you like they're going to bite your arm? You know what that is? It's called wickedness. Well, I have no wickedness in my family. Have you really looked at it for a while? It says, He hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. You know something? Now that you're weakened and you have nothing from that, are you supposed to give up? You realize that when our forefathers won the revolution, they were sitting there without any money system? Where, where, where were they going to get it? But did you notice they didn't turn around and say, well, let's go back to Great Britain. We may lose our money system soon, people. They're bankrupting our country. I'll just give out three trillion dollars. Next, I'll give out two trillion dollars again. And we, you know, something, people. Do you know? Do you realize that with uh, that they could pay everybody in this whole country two thousand dollars with like four hundred billion? Where's the rest of that money going? The over one trillion dollars. You know where it's going? To them. All of our money is going to them. They're devaluing, devaluing, devaluing. Sooner or later, when that becomes bankrupt, let me tell you something. We're going to have nothing. Somebody better stand up. Maybe it's time we just go back to being a republic instead of a corporation. Amen? Mm -hmm. I hear it all the time. You know, one of the biggest things I ever hear, I hear preachers that want to brag about themselves. We're free church. We're this church. <clears throat> we're that church. Look. Every church is a church that's preaching the gospel and has the right book for a church. America. It's the land of the free and the home of the brave, and it was an idea and still needs to stay that same way. We're losing it, but we're not stopping the fight because Corey Chartier, he wants to get back to India and preach the gospel where people are getting saved. Josh Lieb, he's over in Sicily trying to get people saved, and people are getting saved over there. We got the Resmondos that are over in Africa, and we support them, and they've seen thousands upon thousands get saved. Amen. It's our money. Yeah, and our prayers. Yeah. You're all a part of an organization, but mostly you're part of a church. Let the church rise. People, our country started from the pulpit. Patrick Henry was a preacher. And he got up at the pulpit and he said, give me liberty or give me death. Give me liberty or give me death. The preachers that were up in the pulpits in the revolution, guess what? They stepped down from the pulpits, went out to their backyard with a musket, and they started to defend and fight. The preachers are hiding behind pulpits today. I'm not talking about the ones that are apostate or the ones that the churches that have women or whatever it is. I'm talking about us. Yeah, I'm a patriot. If you want to cut that down and mock at it, that's too bad. Get out of the way, son. I've listened to my father who was a veteran, who listened to his fathers who were veterans who listened to their fathers who were veterans, who listened to Americans who came to this country seeking the Lord. I'm honored that he found me. He put me in this church and it's my, he says, you know, he says in that Bible, it says stand, stand. And you know what it says? Doing all that you can to stand. America. It's my country. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for good preaching today, Lord Father. And I thank you, Lord God, for a good country that we're in. 
the United States of America, Lord Father, and I thank you, Lord God, that we have a rich history. A rich history, and, a, and there were rich churches, Lord Father, not by money, but by spirit. Father, thank you for the church people. Thank you for their incredible courage, Lord Father. Thank you for the body of Christ that stood up to preserve the liberties and the rights in order to help other people upon this earth. Thank you that we're able to send missionaries out, Lord God, to, to give the gospel to the poor, Lord Father. I thank you, Lord Father, for, uh, for men like George Washington. I thank you for men like Thomas Jefferson. I thank you for men like Abraham Lincoln. I thank you, Lord, for Teddy Roosevelt. And I thank you, Lord, for even Donald Trump, Lord Father. I thank you that we've had some good presidents, Lord Father, Ronald Reagan, people that we looked up to. I thank you, Lord, that you've prospered a nation for one reason, one reason only, for your plan. For your plan that goes to eternity, Lord Father. I thank you, Lord God, that you made us responsible right here in a little town of Governor. Thank you, Lord, that we may be the only thing that's keeping pe many people out of hell. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for America. I thank you for Israel. And I thank you, Lord God, that we're able to help you or be used by you, actually, Lord. We can't really help you. Just to be used by you to protect that nation. Thank you for Israel, Lord Father, and I pray for the peace of Israel that is a true peace through the Lord Jesus Christ. With every head's bowed, eyes closed. Where's your heart? Do you think that way or do you think your old way? Let me have my way. Or is it, let's stay in the fight. Let's stay in the fight. Father, again, I thank you, Lord God, for a good message. I thank you for these people and their peace, Lord Father. And I pray, Lord Father, give them peace the rest of the day with their families. We love you, Lord. We want to serve you. We thank you, Lord, for a great country, the United States of America. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, I'll make you